Have you ever seen a picture of an atom? You probably saw something like this. But where did this idea come from? How can we have a picture of something that's so small that we can't even see it? Well, it all started with Democritus. He was an ancient Greek philosopher who lived around 400 BC, and he was the first person to come up with the idea of an atom. He actually used the word atomus, which is a Greek word for uncuttable, or smallest indivisible particle. One story to how Democritus came up with this idea was that as he walked on the sand, he thought of how the sand used to be pebbles. These pebbles would have broken apart to form the sand, and he thought that the sand would eventually break down into smaller, smaller particles, and so on, and so on, until it couldn't break apart any further. The particle that would be left with this was the smallest indivisible particle, in other words, the atom. There were really two main parts to his theory. Atoms are indivisible, and they are also indestructible. Democritus was far ahead of his time, but his idea lacked experimental evidence and was simply based on reason. At the same time Democritus lived, there was another popular idea to what matter was made of. This idea was proposed by Aristotle. Aristotle was another ancient Greek philosopher who lived around the same time as Democritus. Aristotle did not believe that matter was made up of tiny particles called atoms, but rather matter was made up of five basic elements, earth, water, air, fire, and ether. Although Aristotle's idea was incorrect, his idea was more widely accepted than Democritus' idea for about 2,000 years. Both Aristotle and Democritus lived before the development of the scientific method, and so their ideas lacked experimental evidence. It wasn't until the early 1800s that a man named John Dalton developed the atomic theory that would be based on his experimental evidence and observations. John Dalton was an English school teacher who studied gases. He studied how gases combine, react, move, change with temperature and pressure, and through his research he developed his idea called the atomic theory. Dalton's theory has five main postulates. First, he said, all matter is composed of atoms. Next, he said that atoms cannot be created or destroyed. His third postulate is all atoms of the same element are identical, and so different elements have different types of atoms. Next, he said that chemical reactions occur when atoms are rearranged. And finally, he said compounds are formed by the combination of two or more different kinds of atoms. There was a lot that Dalton didn't know about atoms, however his theory is still useful as the basis for the modern atomic theory. Dalton's idea that atoms were indivisible was held to be true for almost the next 100 years, until the work of J.J. Thompson. He was another English scientist who worked in the late 1800s. Thompson discovered that the atom could be divided, and he discovered a negatively charged part of the atom called the electron. J.J. Thompson worked with a device called the cathode ray tube also known as a Crookes tube. This device was a sealed glass container that has two electrodes separated by a vacuum. When voltage was applied across these electrodes, cathode rays were created. In other words, a stream of electrons that would move across the glass tube. When the particles struck the other end of the tube, a glowing patch was created, thus visualizing where the particles were. Thompson discovered that if he used a magnetic field, he was able to move or deflect these particles. These particles would also be moved by an electric field, and Thompson found that these particles would always move towards the positive charge. He was thus able to conclude that these particles were negatively charged. Thompson revised the atomic theory to include these particles. He called his theory the plum pudding model. In this model, the atom is represented by a traditional English dessert. It's kind of like a chocolate chip cookie, where the chocolate chips represent the electrons, which are embedded in the rest of the atom, and the rest of the atom would be represented by the cookie. The next discovery was developed by a scientist who actually worked with J.J. Thompson. His name was Ernest Rutherford. Rutherford did most of his experiments at McGill University in Montreal, and he's responsible for the discovery of a positively charged particle of the atom that's called a proton.
Rutherford fired alpha particles at a very thin sheet of gold foil. Alpha particles are relatively massive particles, and they were traveling at such high speeds. So Rutherford and his colleagues expected the particles to be able to pass right through the gold foil. This hypothesis was based on J.J. Thompson's model of the atom, or the plum pudding model. J.J. Thompson predicted that the electrons were distributed throughout the atom, and that the rest of the atom would be a positively charged portion of the atom. Since the positive charge was distributed throughout the atom, they didn't think there would be much interference for the alpha particles. And so Rutherford and his colleagues believed the alpha particles would simply pass right through the atom, and they would be detected on a screen on the other side. This was not the case. To Rutherford's surprise, he found that some of the particles scattered, and some even deflected almost right backwards. J.J. Thompson's model of the atom had to be adjusted in order to fit the new evidence. Rutherford and his colleagues believed that there must be a very massive particle directly in the center of the atom, and this particle must be positively charged. They also believed that the electrons, rather than being embedded within the atom, were actually circling around the outside of this central particle. And so the atom was mostly empty space. Rutherford was given credit for these two discoveries. First, that the atom contained a dense center, which was positively charged, and had the proton. And secondly, that the atom was made up of mostly empty space. The next discovery resulted from the research of Niles Bohr. Bohr is responsible in large part for the transition to the modern view of the, of the atom. And Bohr's model is actually called the Bohr model of the atom. Bohr found that electrons will actually travel around the atom in discrete energy levels. Bohr found that electrons can only exist on these energy levels. They can never exist between the energy levels. He also found that electrons can move up an energy level if they are given enough energy. He called this amount of energy a quantum of energy. A quantum of energy was just a very small amount of energy that was the exact amount of energy for an electron to move from one energy level to the next energy level. The next discovery was from Louis de Broglie. De Broglie proposed that waves can act like particles and particles can act like waves. De Broglie suggested that electrons are better described as waves rather than as particles. This was significant because we can describe the energy of electron better by looking at its wavelength rather than just its mass and velocity. De Broglie paved the way for other scientists to expand on his idea of describing the electrons as waves. Werner Heisenberg proposed that one of the implications of electrons behaving like waves is that you cannot know both the speed and position of electron at the same time. This is called the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Erwin Schrödinger developed a mathematical equation to show where electrons are located around the central nucleus of an atom. Since electrons behave like waves and we cannot know precisely where they are located like Heisenberg has told us, we cannot pinpoint the electrons to specific rings like in the Bohr model. Schrödinger showed us with his wave equation that we can only know regions of probability of finding an electron. And we call this the electron cloud model. Finally, there is James Chatwick. Chatwick was responsible for the discovery of the neutron. We now know that the neutrons are located in the nucleus of the atom, along with the protons. And thanks to the work of the other scientists, we know the electrons are found around the nucleus in an electron cloud. And that's the atom.